Good evening, people, if you can hear me out there. Hope everyone's having a good evening. <clears throat> Can everybody hear me okay? been a rainy early spring day here in, in uh, Springfield so I hope everybody's having a, as good of a weather as they can my talked to my mom earlier today and they had a snow and ice blizzard up where they live in uh, Colorado so we're gonna give a few give, we're gonna give people a few minutes to get in here before uh, we get started Can everyone hear me okay? Well, let's see, we've got six people here. That's very good. We did pretty good last night. If you missed it, we held our first uh, Druid School class. And that was very fun. I was glad to be able to uh, Put that together we've got another one coming up next week so that's gonna be very interesting I thought about something about doing something like this today because you know everybody needs a little something to kind of uh, ease their mind and stuff so and I don't have a lot going on I don't think very many of us do so being pagan and stuff it's like this is one of the things we can do we can come together and do this All right, looks like we've got eight people out there. I don't know if this thing's going to let you guys type through, but somebody give me a hi or hello just to, so I know that this is working. I'd appreciate it. So a couple more minutes and then uh, hey all right there's Sean I see Sean all right we're getting a couple more people coming in Sean can you hear me okay hopefully your internet is working decently this evening all right well what we're gonna do tonight as more people come in let me see what's it okay cool very cool that's good uh, uh, just wanted to make sure that everything's functional and working um, but Considering the situation that we're in and everything, you know, there's there's always this situation where people are stressed, and I know I'm. I mean, you know, we're we're just as stressed as we're going to be because we don't we have this uncertainty factor about what's going on. Excuse me. And so it's like sometimes we need to take time to calm things down, and uh, you know, just reassess the situation that we're in get ourselves centered and uh, you know just know that we can do this so one of the best things that we can do uh, is come together and meditate 
some people are scared of meditation. They are just as scared to meditate as they are to work ritual a lot of times. And meditation is one of the easiest things to do. Uh, you know, it's simple as sitting by a tree and not and just you know thinking for five minutes. You know, not saying anything. And just, you know, turning yourself inward and just thinking your own thoughts. A lot of people say meditation is about clearing your mind. Yes, for some, that is the way that it's done. But for others, it's just, you know, not talking and just listening to yourself, just letting your mind do what it's going to do. And I recommend, if you even can take five minutes a day, just turn off the TV, turn off your stereo, just do whatever. And just sit there and just think and just let yourself exist for a little bit without, you know, everything that's going on around you. It can it can help definitely make things a lot better in your situation. Um, wow, we got 15 people coming in here. All right. I appreciate it. All right. So what we're going to do is tonight we're going to do a uh, druidic meditation uh, based towards uh, healing and getting calm and kind of <clears throat> excuse me directed towards keeping ourselves on a on a level playing field while this is going on being strong for ourselves and our our spouses and our children and that, that whole kind of thing to where uh you know we take time for ourselves to give ourselves strength and uh the energy to continue on through whatever this brings our way you know and this is something that you can do pretty much daily. And what I suggest is for those of you that are sitting at your computer, if you want to, I would suggest that you get a candle, light a candle if you want, uh, put on some very just low in the background uh, of your favorite New Age or Celtic music and have that as a, uh, as a uh, background to what we're going to be going on. Also, have yourself in a comfortable chair and get ready to uh, go through this. And what I'm going to do is whatever it is that I'm telling you to do, I'm going to be doing the same thing just so that you can know that I am going through this with you. Uh, turn off the phone or turn off your phones if you can. Put it on vibrate or whatever. That way you won't be disturbed during this. And I don't necessarily know how long it's going to take. But another thing I was thinking for those that uh, are watching, this will be recorded and put up live on the Druid School page. So later on, if you want to come back and take a look at this again and go through the meditation, you'll have a something to go along with so that you can do it more than just one time with me. And those that are here tonight, I appreciate you guys being here and we'll we'll get this going so basically what we want to do is we want to sit back in our chairs and have our feet planted on the floor about a arms width apart about a foot you want to close your eyes and you want to deep breathe one of the most important things that you want to do is be aware of your breathing because if you're aware of your breathing you're aware of yourself and so what we want to do is we just want to let all the stress of the day just melt away all the things with kids and family and just everything just start to let it melt out of your body from the tip of your head down through your shoulders and your abdomen and down through your buttocks, up through your legs, down through your calves and out through your feet. While you're doing this, I want you to take a deep breath and then hold it and just let it out naturally. And then take another deep breath and then hold it and let it out naturally. Just relaxing, nothing harsh, nothing overly hard. This is meditation. It's not. It's it's a practice that has been going on for thousands of years. It is very easy and very beneficial to our life and our physical well-being and our spiritual well-being. So what I want you to do is take another deep breath. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a progressive breathing pattern. 
but starts out full. And as we progress through this meditation, it's going to decrease and decrease to almost to the point where it's like you're not breathing, but you are. You'll understand as we get there. Take a deep breath in through your mouth and release. And as you're doing so, we're going to start a pattern of getting your body relaxed at the same time. So what I want you to do is I want you to clench every muscle from your feet all the way up to your neck, your stomach, your abdomen, your shoulders, your face, your head. Just clench it. And what I want you to do while you have it clenched, I want you to take a deep breath and hold it and then release it. And as you release it, I want you to unclench your feet and just let them sit naturally on the floor feeling the stress of the day and the week and everything with family and jobs and all kinds of situations, just leaving your body. We're going to take another deep breath in through the mouth and relax as we're doing so. Hold it and release it through the nose. And as you do that, let your calves unclench. Just let those go into a natural warm state. You can feel all the stress and strain of everything that's been going on leaving your body. Next, we're going to take a deep breath and we're going to hold it and we're going to release. And as we release it, we're going to let all that clenched up from our buttocks down through our entirety of our legs to our feet. We're going to let that just drain away and just slide out and just just go away into the floor and just spread out away from our bodies all the stress aggravation pain everything is going to move and go away from you take another deep breath in through the mouth deep hold it and then release it and as you do your clenched up abdomen muscles you're just going to let those Release nice and easy with no sudden movements, no sudden. Just let it go nice and natural. And we're going to take another deep breath and we're going to hold it and we're going to let it out. And as we let it out, we're going to let our shoulders and our chest muscles just relax and just feel this warmth energizing and just moving through our body down through our abdomen and our legs we're taking all the stress and we're taking it and we're removing it from our situation from our body from our mind from our spirit take another deep breath in through the mouth hold it and release and as you do unclench your neck those muscles that come across the top of your scapula and your shoulder blades just let that release and drain down through your body, through your abdomen, through your stomach, all the way down and out through the tips and bottom, tips of your toes and the bottom of your feet. As you do so, you feel a little bit less aware of your surroundings, a little bit less aware of the world. You're taking this time for yourself. And we're going to start that progressive breathing here in just a minute. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a deep breath, hold it, and we're going to release. And as we release, we're going to unscrunch all the muscles in our face, our ears, the top of our head. And we're going to feel that just all of that stuff that's been clogging up our mind and our senses for the last week or more. Just let it just drain down through your neck and into your upper abdomen and out through your buttocks and down through your legs and out through the tips and tips of your toes and the bottoms of your feet. Now we move into the meditation portion of this and what we're going to do is we're going to start that progressive breathing that I was talking about. And what we do is we're going to start with our eyes closed with three deep breaths. And what we're going to do is we're going to take those three breaths and after that, we're going to start another progression and we're going to cut those breaths in half. And as we do, 
we're going to see ourselves starting to journey down a set of stone stairs. They can look however you want, any color of stone. Going deeper and deeper down away from this reality, away from the situation, but we're gonna start with our first breath, and then release it. With our second breath, and then release it. And then our third breath, and release it. Now we're gonna take those three breaths and we're starting with our feet and we're moving down the stairs. We're going to go down from 10 to one. We're gonna take the three breaths that we took just a minute ago, and we're gonna cut them in half. And release. Breathe in and release. Breathe in and release. We're going to start going down the stairs even further. Nine. We're going to breathe in, and I'm going to start just counting down the stairs and not the breaths. Each time it's going to be three breaths in, and then we're go with each breath, we're going to go out as half as much as the last one until we get down to number one. Eight. Seven. Six, going deeper and deeper down the stairs. And as you go down the stairs, you can see towards the bottom of that landing that you're walking down these stairs, you see a large wooden door with a large iron accent going to hinges on either side and a very large round handle to grab. But you're not quite there yet. You're still leaving this world. You're still leaving this situation this plane of existence behind. We return to our breathing. Five. Four. Three. Two. One, and as we come to the number one, we are standing before this door. It looks to be about 10 feet high and about five feet wide. This is a very large door opening. You can tell that on the other side, you can place your hand upon it and you can feel a slight warmth. You're not afraid of it. There is no apprehension as you stand at this doorway. And something in your mind tells you to grab a hold of that handle and to open the door and step through the doorway. You grab a hold of that handle. And even after all this millennia, the hinges are perfectly oiled. They are not stressed by time or decay. And you pull and the door opens and on the other side of the door as you open it you see our world as it was many millennia ago and you step through the door and so you see yourself on a plane with boulders and trees and grass and warmth and sunlight and you hear the sounds of animals and critters and birds all around and before you you take a few steps forward past this opening and the door closes behind you you're not afraid you do not fear the fact that your 
way out has been closed. You feel very at peace and at home here. And also, at the same time, you feel very curious. And your curiosity causes you to move forward and you look and you see flowers and you see plant life and you see these trees and you see great oaks and you see firs and you see conifers of every type and you even listen and off in the distance you swear that you can hear the rumblings of a large creek or small river making its sounds within your earshot and you notice as you walk forward that you look down and your feet are upon a well-worn path of earth and stone that winds and moves and twists into the forested areas in front of you the sun making its way through the tree limbs down to your face it's warm it feels just it feels beautiful here it smells wonderful you have no fear of anything while you walk through this land and you walk and you enjoy and you take time to smell the flowers and, and see the sights around you you look up in the tree boughs and you see mother birds with their babies peeked up over the tops of their nests you can see off in a glade not too far to your to your left you see a buck standing with his antlers so as if to show that he is a protector of this place you continue walking on for a period 10 15 20 minutes and this path that you're up on opens up into a large area of grass and it's just a great a great open space before you after coming through the forest and what you see is a village a rather it's not a it's not a small village but it's not a city it's a large encampment and you see people in the distance moving in and out of huts and and various buildings and as you get closer to the people you can tell that they that these people seem to be in your mind's eye what the ancient Celtic people, the Irish people, may have looked like many thousands of years ago. And as you get closer, they see you. That you're not you have not gone undetected. They saw you as you came through the clearing, but they aren't afraid of you. They they know that you are a brother, that you are a sister. And a young woman meets you at the entrance to their village there is a cairn of stones that marks the boundaries of their location and she stands before you and she says welcome and she tells you your name she knows your name and she says we knew that you would be coming we would like you to spend the day with us and join us later for a communal dinner But first, before we do that, I would like to take you to meet our clan chief. And she leads you to the center of the village to a long building that is a slightly bigger than the others, a little bit better decorated. And standing in front of the door to his own dwelling is the chief, a man that stands about six feet two, dressed in green, with breeches and boots, primitive as they are, and long red hair and a red beard, and his hair is tied in a series of braids, and he's wearing a beautiful torque around his neck. 
and he has a pipe and he's lighting it off of a fire that's out in front of his his dwelling and he goes to each of you in your own time that are standing before him everybody that is listening to the sound of my voice you are before him now and he goes I understand that you are going through troubles we have seen it we have heard it we have known that these things can happen in the millennia to all peoples not just here but in other worlds of, uh, as well and you are surprised that he would know these things how would he know and you straight up ask how do you know these things and he says our druids told us they did their divinations they talked to the gods and they know that things are not right where you are they know that the situation may seem hopeless to some but you know and we know that the gods are always watching over us that they're there for us to give us inspiration and to help us through bad times and knowing that he knows this is not it's 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 not only just surprising but it is also reassuring and comforting to know that you're not the only one that feels the way you do in that bewildered kind of way of like why are things happening in our world the way that they are the gods know the ancestors know they see everything and so for everybody that is going through this journey with me at the sound of my voice he takes you around and introduces you to various people that are villagers and these are your brothers and sisters from many 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 millennia ago they have watched they have seen our society and our world grow and go through all the pains and tribulations that we have gone through in our history they can't help but know exactly what our situation is because they have gone through the same thing they have gone through wars and famines and pestilences but over time by the powers of the gods that watch over them and that watch over us they knew that everything was going to be okay that the situation would work out in some fashion that humanity would continue over time the day continues and he says to you <coughs> we are getting ready to have our meal we in, we implore and ask that you would join us for the evening the people of the village come out of their individual homes and start to file to a place that's just a short distance away from the uh, village and what you see is some large spits that have various deer and oxen and other animals roasting in their tables that are loaded with breads and uh, apples and fruits and nuts and fish and just all these wonderful foods and as the uh, elderly members of the tribe start to sit down on uh, tree stumps that they use for seats some of the younger women and boys and children take plates that are made out of planks of wood and start filling them up with all different kinds of delectables uh, and taking them around and they start with you first you are a guest and they hand you a plate and they hand you a flagon of beautiful sweet honey mead nectar of the gods it is the best you've ever tasted and as you wait for everyone to get their plates you can look around and you're sitting in a group of about a hundred to two hundred people and as the Sun begins to go down a fire is lit 
and the chief stands up and points towards you and says to his people, this is our guest, and he names your name. They have traveled here because things in their world are not in the best shape, not in the way that they would wish for it to be. And the gods through our druids have spoken to us and said that we should extend our hospitality to each one of these that come in their mind in this meditation to give them hope and to let them know that all is not lost. And with that, the chief sits down and you enjoy a wonderful meal with everyone that is sitting around this fire. The breezes are blowing softly. The evening air is just, it, you can smell the night flowers. You can see stars are starting to come out. The moon is starting to rise. And after everybody has finished their meal, the chief again stands and he goes, for any of our brothers and sisters that live here within the village, I would ask that you would rise and pronounce a blessing upon these folks that have come to assuage their fears and let them know from your heart that there is health and that there is stability in their lives and that they can beat any situation that is brought before them. An older woman with gray hair and beautiful red eyes, just this, just these coppery eyes and the sallow skin with lines. She has been with this for so long. She is their clan mother. She has taken them through so much and she steps over in, in to where you are sitting next to the chief and she has a glass with water in it, a cup with water. And she takes her finger and dips into it and she takes and she makes lines down the, your forehead that are the three ways, rays of the Awen and she says, may the blessings of body, mind and spirit be yours. Child, do not fear. This body will be eternal. Your spirit will be eternal. But I know that even now that you fear things that you cannot see, but you have the strength and you have the power of the gods to take you through each day, to take your family through each day, to take the people that you love through each day. Your health will be yours until it is your time. You have control over your situation. Do not be foolish, surely, but just know that this brotherhood of people that have gone on before you will always have blessings for you and for your family and for your friends and those that you love through every millennia and those to come. She turns and she returns to her seat. And an older gentleman, even older than the clan chief, comes up and he has a small little handheld, looks like a harp. And he goes, Many years ago, I was the bard of this clan. I cannot travel like I used to, but I can sing the songs and I can tell the tales of the brothers and sisters that are here, but I tell a tale to you as I play the notes of music that go to the heavens, that go to the gods. And he begins to pluck each string, each note, is a song, is a melody, is a twinkle of a star to itself. And you can feel that energy as this man of many years 
directs the energy from his playing of that harp into your body and into your mind. And he goes, fear not life, fear not death, fear not pain, but be strong and move forward. Do not be defeated, for we are warriors, men and women, who take no joy in the comforts of the things that would bring us down. We have power, and we are not afraid to use it. You should not be afraid to use your power every day to make a difference in the lives of your, of your wives, your children, your nieces, your nephews, the people that you work with, the people that you meet on the street every day in your world, you are the warrior that can make a difference. And he goes, my time will come, everyone's time will come, but for now, we have the power to be strong, to stay healthy, to keep our wits, and to be a bulwark for the people that we care for. And the people that are sitting around can hear what he's saying. And even with, with his own people, they start to smile and nod as he, they, they give him respect. He is a great elder in their clan. And they understand everything that he said because as a group, they've gone through many trials too. And they have seen through him in his time that he was a great strength and a great comfort to them with his songs and his stories. After he comes up, there is a, a, a couple of children that are sitting over by their mother. They are about 12 and 13. One is a redheaded young boy, and next to him is a beautiful brunettish girl. They're almost the same height. The brother's a little bit taller than his sister. And they come and they get up from their from in front of their mother's knees and they come and they walk over to you and each one of them is holding an apple. One holds a red apple and one holds a green apple. And they look at you and they say, Sometimes life is hard to deal with. It's hard to deal with whenever I have to do extra chores, says the says the young boy. And the little girl goes, Sometimes my brother is a pain. I don't like being teased by him, but I've always been told by my brother to, or told by my mother to just grin and bear it and give him his leeway because he is family and he is blood. But some people don't have that luxury. Some people don't have that mental fortitude to do those kinds of things. So what we do is we present you with these apples. Apples are the foods of the gods. They contain their essence. The red apple is for you to take a bite from whenever you feel that your body is in its weakness, is not at its, at its best. You can at any time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, look into your mind's eye and take up this apple into your hand and eat from it and gain the sustenance that you need for your body and for your mind. The young boy steps forward, and he hands you his apple, the green apple. And he goes, this is the, 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 the sharpest, most pungent, most delicious apple. Some people have depression. Some people can't handle the stresses of life. Some people just want to throw up their hands and give up. But this apple is the apple of strength. This is the apple of pureness of mind whenever you feel that you can't deal with the situation that's going on currently in your world you take up this apple and you take and you eat from it freely and in doing so you strengthen your mind you strengthen your ability to not give in to the depression of life and the things that are going on that it gives you a second chance at the day it gives you the power to realize that you're not alone, that even us, your ancestors, are there for you and will always be there for you. 
And when he says that to you and you've taken these apples and you've taken them and placed them in a pouch that's on your side, you, you kind of look around at this group of people and you realize that these are your ancestors. These are your brothers and sisters from many millennia. These are your brothers and sisters now, the people in your spiritual world and your mundane world that care for you, that look up to you, that know that you are a great person in your own right for doing what it is that you do every day, for what you do every day whenever you wake up and you put your feet onto the floor. Pretty soon, the night has gone on and it's time for everyone to return to the village and get ready to hunker down for sleep and prepare for the next day. The clan chief comes up to you and he says, I appreciate you making this journey. I know that it was hard. It is hard for everyone to take and make the choices that they need to make to be able to live life, to be able to keep on moving forward. Sometimes we just want to put on the brakes and just stop. And those 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 feelings are okay, but we should know that we need to move on. We need to be able to press forward in existence because that's what the gods want for us. They want strength, and they want health, and they want peace. And our entire clan and your ancestors want to give you peace, and they want to give you health, and they want to give you a sound mind that can take on any situation, even those that you are dealing with currently in your realm. He goes, I must attend to my people, but I send you with these blessings that you have received tonight. And he takes his own flasks, takes a swig of some whiskey, and pours out some onto his fingers and makes the sign of the Awen on your forehead and says, may the blessings of mind, body, and spirit be yours. I send you back to your realm and ask that you go in peace. He takes up his pipe, lights it, and walks away and goes back to the village. You follow him. People nod and, and give you little bits of greeting and, and Goodbye as you make your way back through the village, back to the path that you started when the young girl met you at the beginning. And you make your way through the night forest, back on the path that you came. You can hear the critters. You can hear the, the birds, the birds of the night making their way from tree to tree. You can still hear that rushing river that was just just so far off to your peripheral but you have no fear you have you feel blessed you feel that you will make it through this situation you know that your health is bolstered you know that the health of your loved ones is bolstered you know that you will have the discernment in your mind to do the things that you need to do to make it through the situation because you have yourself, you have your family, and you have the gods. Making your way back through the forest and you come to the end of the path and standing at the end of the path is that door that you step through. You walk forward, you grab a hold of the handle, you open the door, and right in front of you, you see those stairs that you came down originally. And what we're going to do is I'm going to have you take some deep breaths. And as you do, I'm going to count backwards from 10 to 1. And at the end of this, you will be back in this plane, in this realm of existence. But still remembering the things that were important that you saw and that you witnessed and that you felt 
when you're with your people, the people of the Druids, the people of the gods, the door closes behind you and you make your first step, breathing in and breathing out 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Open your eyes, and now you are back. You're here, and you have gone through this meditation. This is something that you can do anytime, day or night. Um, you can shorten it down. You can, like they said, you can take up the apples and eat when you need to you can tell you can take your kids through this if they ever get overly rambunctious or just you know they have a lot of questions and things like that you as parents can take your children and sit down with them and meditate with them and kind of get them into a grounded state and over time we will do more of these we'll do different ones uh, in the near future um, I want to thank everybody for uh, you know attending and uh, if you liked it give me a thumbs up send me some loves I, I just want to know uh, what you guys thought of it and also another thing that I like to do whenever I do run a meditation like this is I ask because sometimes whenever you're in a meditative state that certain things will happen you may have images or messages that come through to you because we are psychic beings and I'm just uh, curious as to if anybody had any uh, experiences other than what we went through because uh, and another thing is if you did one thing that I recommend people do is to keep a journal whenever you meditate because then you can take the messages that you receive from the gods and your spirit guides and various other things you can write those down and have those at your fingertips so that you can look back at them and see how they pertain to your situation uh, how good they were, you know, if they if there was anything that was uh, pertinent to, you know, whatever situations were going on. And I appreciate everybody being here. And before I log off, does anybody have any questions about anything that we went through or any uh, uh, statements that you like to make? I appreciate everybody that showed up for this. This is very cool. And uh, we're going to try to do more of this. And uh, like I said, this will probably be live within like next 10 minutes or so on the Druid School page. So you'll be able to uh, reference it again if you want to. And we're going to do more of these also next week on Thursday, either between 7 or 8 o'clock. We're going to be doing our next Druid School live. Last night we did uh, Who Are the Druids? Next week we're going to be doing the next Logical Progression is since we found out who the Druids were, we kind of want to go into and learn about the Irish Celtic pantheon, the Tuatha Dé Danann. So we're going to be dealing with who were the gods or who are the gods of the Druids in that uh, instance. I want to thank everybody that came. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought. Leave me some comments and uh, keep an eye out because we're going to be doing some different more different things while this is going on. And if you have any questions or you just want to talk about things that are just kind of giving you fits and you just need a sounding board, feel free to message me and I'll be there for you as much as I can because I know that, you know, this is a situation that we're not used to. Uh, any kind of support that we can get, you know, specifically from our spiritual brothers and sisters in a situation like this, it's important. It help, it's what helps keeps us, you know, continuing on. So I want to thank you guys, and I hope to see your comments and such, and pass this on to your friends because it will be live here in a few minutes. And I want to say thank you, and good night, everybody. I appreciate it.